Hello, welcome my creatives. This is cu a cup of creativity in a literary lounge, a place where writing doesn't have to suck. I'm Kinda Faith, I'm your host and founder of Faith Publishing Inc. And today I want to talk about post-publication depression. I don't know if that's an actual thing or not, but that's what I actually want to talk about. I want to talk about the, the blues or that ho-hum feeling or that just bummed out feeling that you, that people, uh, you know, experience after they publish a work or after you finish this large presentation or this large piece of work. But before I get into that, um, let me begin with our shout outs. Uh, the first one being the Advanced Learning Library at Wichita um, and their AV studio. It is absolutely amazing. Um, my authors, I definitely think that we should get more of you guys in here so we could do a, an interview that and you can also experience this amazing, amazing room. And then the second one, obviously, I want to throw out um, Faith Publishing Inc. That is my, my baby, my child, my it's pretty much my life right now. Um, Faith Publishing Inc. is a nonprofit publishing company. We strive to serve underrepresented voices. We want to do that through publication, through writing programs, through different writing services, um, any kind of voice that is just not getting attention. That's pretty much who I want to focus on. We, our hashtag is supporting the writing journey. And I'm going to be talking a lot about that. Um, it's not just making a story and putting a pen to paper. It, creation or creating is, it is a journey. It is a cycle. It is euphoric and has its ups and downs and it can, can be sad at times. And so I kind of want to discuss some of that. Um, the great thing about faith publishing is that we are there throughout this whole entire journey. It's okay. We are going to be there and spazzing out and doing jazz hands. And I'm going to be thrilled about your, your voice and about your story and how it gives me goosebumps, goosebumps and how I'm like swearing like a sailor. And I just, you know, me, I'm just going to be me. That is a wonderful. And we, and we have this amazing, amazing feeling, this euphoria that we experience, but faith publishing also wants to be there during your struggles during the twists and the turns, and then also maybe just, I don't know, we want to be with you in your quiet. We want to be there to have that comfortable silence while we are all kind of processing once that post-publication depression kind of feels sets in. And maybe that's kind of like a, I don't know, not the best topic to discuss, but I think it's important. Um, no one ever talks about that. In my career, no one has ever talked about, oh, you are going to feel this and it's going to be great. No one's going to give you attention. No one talks about when you don't get attention anymore. You, no one talks about, you know, not receiving those emails or not receiving those accolades. And then you're kind of stuck with yourself and you're like, hmm. So, but faith publishing, we are there throughout the whole entire journey. The great part, the, well, there's many great parts, but one of the... I don't know, one of the sections, one of the factors that set my company apart from everybody else is that we together, you, me, we all together are the audience. We are the storytellers and we are building a legacy doing this. Every single talent matters. It's all about communicating. It's all about sharing. It's all about making an impact. So every single talent that does that matters. Every voice matters and every single story deserves to be told i'm gonna let that just like linger for a minute every single story deserves to be told now if that does not inspire you i do not know what what will faith publishing is going to inspire other people and in return we are inspired as well which oh my goodness come on you gotta get excited about that Okay, before I get into kind of like maybe a, a dark topic, I do want to do the mantra. Um, I know you're like, why is she sounding even more spastic than normal? It's because, you know what, um, I need this. <laughs> I need this. I need the mantra. I need to make sure that I am doing, giving you my absolute best. That is my job. My job is to help build, create, inspire, support, and share 
all of that. And by doing that, we're going to do it with the mantra because it makes me happy and it makes me like I can conquer the world. So therefore, if I feel like that, well, obviously you're going to feel like that, right? Yeah. Okay, my loves, let's get ready. Today, I will face fear. Today, I will be brave. Today, I will struggle. Today, I will grow. Today, I will get through this. Huzzah! Okay, so really, if you go online, if you're, if you're just listening, please make sure that you see the words for this mantra. Print it out. Put it up on your workstation. Put it on your phone. Say it all the time. Say it with a kazoo. Say it to your cat, right? Um, mantras help. Mantras give you a sense of structure, they give you a sense of routine, and they are like that self-fulfilled prophecy telling you that you are going to be all right. I do this all the time. I'm really, really considering. Now, I do this in my class usually once a week, but I'm really considering about doing this every single day. We shall see. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. Um, the topic I would like to discuss is post publication depression syndrome. Now, again, I really don't know if that's a, a medical thing. Um, I recently read a book and it discussed some, you know, the highs and lows of publication and the creative um, process. And I thought that this was a really important topic. So I want to kind of delve into um, what this is. Why does it happen and what you can do about it? Um, but I know you guys should get used to this. I'm constantly interrupting myself, <laughs> right? Um, I do want to throw out just a quick little reminder um, before we get into this topic, and that is the Kansas Book Festival that's coming up in September. Um, obviously, if you would like to get your your work published prior to that, get on it. Come on, contact me. You can go through our website, which is faithpublishing.org. You can email me directly. It's Kinda K Y N D A dot faith f a y t h e at faithpublishing dot org. Send me um, an email. Let me know your thoughts. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I would really like to know if you are going to go to a festival, a book festival. What would you like to see? So recently, my son and we all know I have my kids kick. Now I'll say it. My kids kick ass. They do. <laughs> Their creative process is just as spastic as mine, and I just dig it. Um, my son recently came back from an anime expo in Los, Los Angeles, and there was, oh my gosh, like 300,000 people. 300,000 people there. And it was really fun for him. It, it was fun for me to see how excited he was. And, of course, he brings back all of the swag and he brings back all of the stuff. And, you know, of course, he has his own ideas about his own merchandise, et cetera, et cetera. But it was kind of nice to see, you know, his his ideas for his swag or his, his merchandise was not way off base compared to everybody else. So I, I do not write or create anime. I like to watch it. I like to read it. I like to think about it, um, but I don't necessarily know if that is what my audience would like at a book festival, right? I mean, sure, okay, we could make a book bag. We could make some posters or book things, right? What would you like to see? So shoot me an email or put some um, comments down below and let me know. Oh, and also subscribe already. Would you just subscribe? You know that you like listening to me just ramble on and on and on, me sharing all my lovely wealth of knowledge. So subscribe so I can teach you some more. Okay, so remember, uh, hit subscribe and then also shoot me an email or put some comments um, on the post and let me know some of your ideas about what kind of swag that you would like to see. What kind of swag can I make? What kind of swag can I offer our audience? So while I'm kind of on this high, because I'm, uh, come on, you guys can notice it, there's ups and there's downs right? There's hills, there's valleys, etc. Um, Post-publication depression syndrome. Well, that's just what we'll call it. Um, first off, what is it? It's normal. It's absolutely normal. So this feeling is kind of, you're going to be feeling low and stressed. Eh, maybe not, not stressed. Maybe like it's that re release of stress. Maybe you're tired, um, bummed out, Maybe kind of just depressed. I mean, I don't want to you know make this bigger than what it is, but I mean, you are going to have um, a lull when you feel this, right? You are going to be because you give it your heart and your soul and your whole entire being. Um, 
when you are creating. And now what is what is kind of interesting, and I've talked about this before, there is a term called fictophilia, which sounds like some awful, awful disease. <laughs> right? And it's essentially that feeling that you are so connected to a character, like you you want to be connected, you know, you want to be friends with them or more, right? I'm not judging. Um, so like, for example, if I am reading a book and I am so involved, I'm so attached to the characters, I'm actually sad when a book ends or a series ends. Um, one example, um, I love Diana Gableden, her Outlander series. I have read it many times, like over and over and over again, but I will tell you, I am faithful to the fact that I love these characters so much, I cannot watch the, the TV program. I can't. Jamie is never going to be Jamie in my brain. Claire is never going to be the person that I see in my brain. But the thing is, when I'm reading, thankfully, these books are like three inches thick, and she's got a whole bunch of them. So, you know, I'm I'm satiated. I'm, I'm okay. I feel all right. But I'm, I have this lull. I experience like this sadness when a book ends. And so I think that you feel that, and I've actually felt it also, when I create something. Um, I have, anything that I ask my students to do, I have tried myself, right? I have written short stories, I've written a novella, I've written a novel, I've written um, academic papers, I've written emails, I've written stuff that I don't want to write, la 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 la, right? Um, and I get really excited in the process. I love brainstorming, I love putting things together, I like seeing how things work. But I feel kind of just uh, at the end, right? Um, I have also described the creative process as kind of like being pregnant and giving birth. My, well, I would say it's minus the stretch marks, but uh, no, you probably are going to have some metaphorical stretch marks. So, you know, when, at the very beginning, you are euphoric. I mean, oh my gosh, you're pregnant. You have this idea. You have a baby. Maybe you've named it, <laughs> right? Maybe you're like, oh, I'm working on... Steve today. Oh, I'm just blah, blah, blah. I need such and such. Uh, um, you know, you're so excited and everybody around you is excited. And then you're like, oh my gosh, I'm getting this published. What? And then of course, every friends, family, we are just as excited. Again, that euphoric state, you're up and you're still, you know, you're excited. You're, you're thrilled about this. You want to see where else you go on this journey. And I honestly, it's kind of a sidebar. I'm just kind of getting this idea now I think that's when writer's block it's not any big deal if we if you space out I mean hi if you listen to me I do it all the time but you just keep on going maybe you hit the pause button take a breather find a word look it up on thesaurus.com or whatever and you move on I think honestly I think that's when writer's block makes a big impact to us because we are so excited about our journey and we're so excited about that poetry piece or this particular chapter or how our, our character develops. And so when you're up on this high, this creative high, you're constantly getting fed more energy, right? You are, you get more attention, which that may seem kind of weird because I say writers as a whole, we kind of just get into our own heads and, you know, I don't need to be writing next to anybody. <laughs> right? I'm perfectly content. But you do, you get energy from everybody else. And that feeds into it, you get more creativity. And I think that's probably why I love working with writers and creatives. I am fed that energy. But the thing is, once you're getting closer and closer to this, the end of this project, or the end of this, this, um, I don't know, let's call it a story arc, right? Um, you are feeling tense and you're you know soon you want this baby out of you <laughs> right you're just like get the hell it needs to go and then you have the Braxton Hicks and then you're like nope it's not ready and then finally when you do have the publication you do have this baby huzzah 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 we are all excited right this is when you're going to have like your uh, baby shower which I'm totally writing that down yes I'm, I hope you guys hear me scribble baby shower for books yeah we need to have a party Baby showers for books. There we go. Um, you you experience a catharsis, right? This is why we all love that tension. You have this build, 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 right? You have a rising action, and then you have this climax, and then <sighs> finally you have a resolve, and you are you have this beautiful, you know, bouncing baby, whatever book, <laughs> and and we're all good, and we all feel great, and then everyone leaves. And then you, your energy dwindles, 
and then you can't get out of bed. So that is the post-publication depression that I'm talking about. Now that sounds horrifying and awful and no one wants to deal with that. But I will tell you, it's a hell of a ride. <laughs> you know, I think I think creatives in general, we're, we, we're used to this whacked out uh, cycle, right? We love the ride. We don't necessarily need the end. We don't like the end. But I will tell you, you need it so you can catch a breath, so you can reflect and you can see how you can do things differently next time. It's okay to be sad. It's okay to be angry. It's okay to be to experience any kind of feeling that you have. And I will say that again, it is okay. Now, why does this happen? I'm not saying that this is hereditary. I'm not saying that this is a chemical imbalance. I'm saying that your creative tank is empty, right? So if you have ever seen a mother that just gave birth to a baby, you leave her alone. You pamper her and you just coddle her and you let her rest because <laughs> she is empty, most you know, metaphorically and literally. So you, when, uh, why this happens is because your creative muscles have been stretched. They have been tested and they are tired. Why? Because writing is hard. Creativity is intense. It is intense. We, again, I, and I've said this before, it's kind of your, like your fictophilia. You are so connected. We know everything about our characters. I know how B. Duncan throws her auburn braid around her, her right shoulder. I know how, um, I don't know, this wonderful character that I've been reading about named Memphis, this great demon, half demon, half, you know human girl I know what she does when she gets scared I right so we all know how these feisty and funny and these beautiful characters all act and we know how that they are engaged because we know them better than anybody so why this is because we're kind of grieving in some cases I think you know you have this up high you have a funeral you have a you know memorial and it's okay to be sad but you have to know that this is a cycle, right? That I will totally put in that whole circle of life Lion King reference, <laughs> right? Um, it is okay to have a lull. It is okay to be sad. And it's okay to just have a breather and maybe look through some old photo albums and see how far you've gone. Now, what happens? So we've already talked about what this is. We've already talked about why this happens. Now we need to know what you do next. One, I still really want to throw a party with a guy in a gorilla suit whenever you publish something. So I would love to have you to have tons of photos so you can look back on this memory. But again, know it's okay to be, it's normal. Okay, know that this, it's okay to be sad. And it's actually okay that you question if inspiration or your lady muse never visits you again. Um, I will tell you, it's going to come back. You just need to to rest. You need to rest your creative muscles. You need to, you know, fill up your creative think tank. That's all you're needing to do. It's just a little bit of downtime, right? Um, again, I'm going to do it. I'm gonna keep on doing this pitch. Your creative journey, that's what faith publishing is all about, right? We are supporting the writer's journey. We are supporting when it's good. We are supporting when it's bad. We are supporting we are supporting when you're doing the whole ugly cry, right? It's okay because we're going to be there when you don't want to get out of bed. How do you get over this? One, take give yourself a break. It's okay to give yourself a couple of days. You're like, man, I'm exhausted. I feel awful. I just want to stay in bed. Stay in bed. Stay in bed. But only give yourself a certain amount of time because after a while, life continues, okay? Your cycle continues. You need to get yourself out of bed. You need to make yourself a routine and create a schedule. This is probably why I am addicted to um, planners and journals. <laughs> it, it keeps me going and gets me out of bed. Um, so set yourself a schedule. Make yourself a routine. Go for a walk. Do a, I don't know, a workout routine. And then finally, you need to share your experience. So again, I'm going to ask you to call, I'm going to call you out and ask you to do a couple of actions. One, always give me your feedback. Let me know what you're thinking. If you have some great idea, I bet it's brilliant. And by all means, let's use it. And then two, share your experience. I'm quite sure I'm not the only person that's ever felt this before. I've seen it, but I, I, I can only 
I don't know. I don't want to say project. I can only guess what you guys have, have thought about. I have seen it in my students. I've seen it in my other authors. So a share, right? C if you know an author that was recently published and maybe it's kind of in that down lull time, share. Why don't you meet them up for coffee or go for a walk in the park? Or you could, even better, you could just post something um, in the comments or email me or anything like that. Because I think it does. It does take a community and it does take support to go through this creative process. So that is what I have for you, my lovelies. Um, we talked about post-publication depression syndrome. We talked about what it is. We talked about why it happens. And we've talked about what you can do about it. You take care of yourself. You get support. And then you share. Share, 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 share. So... Until next time, my name is Kinda Faith, the cup of creativity in the literary lounge, a place where writing doesn't have to suck. I look forward to hearing from you.